I'm replacing this water valve on this fan coil and uh, I'm going to go over a few tips and tricks on that because this is a good opportunity to show how to do some odd stuff. So the first thing is you don't need to use a tubing cutter. This all, all works great and the reason for that when you're in a tight area is because with the tubing cutter you get this positioned. You've got this in the way here. So you're gonna have to make your cut way down here. It's better just to cut it out with a sawzall or a grinder or something. The next thing is, even though I've drained water from here, there's a lot of water down in here that's gonna really mess up the uh, soldering process. So you take a piece of tubing and cut like a nice angle on it. And that will allow it to make that bend plug that and blow on this tubing. Unfortunately, the new valve is shorter than the old one, so I'm gonna put in a piece that I swage. And I don't have a wire brush to clean the inside of this, so this is something that works pretty good if you wrap sand cloth at an angle so that you can tape the top. It works kind of like a flap wheel. That's what it looks like prior to cleaning. Perfect. I'm using this acid flux here and the disadvantage of it is it, it's very acidic so you, you need to clean the outer surfaces and all that kind of thing. But it has a much higher, act well, I shouldn't say a much higher, it has a higher activation temperature, so it can take more heat when you're soldering in a tight place or you're doing stainless steel or anything like that. It's a great flux. Uh, it's just very forgiving, very aggressive, uh, very good at cleaning things, even if you don't get them perfectly clean. I like to flux the inside and outside because there's some cases like this where you don't have a great fit, where if you don't apply flux to both surfaces, you're gonna have something oxidize before the flux has a chance to spread around. Now, I need to cut my pipe the right length, and I'm going to pull this down as far as I can to see what the maximum length is I can make this, and then have it fit up in there. Let me show the soldering setup. So, map gas, like always, and then this torch is made by Worthington, I believe. And then a high quality torch, like a um, TS8000, I believe, made by Benzomatic or anything turbo torch, it tends to be really good. I think this is a Uniweld. I don't like that as much as the turbo torch. All right, I like to put a bend in the solder like this because once that that short piece right here melts off, it gives you another angle. Before putting the water on, we're going to make sure there's a really nice solder ring around every uh, connection. Anyways, 
what I was doing there, if you saw, is I'm heating on the opposite side of the fitting where I'm touching the solder. But not trying to overheat that. You got to be real careful because once you overheat flux, it becomes a contaminant and it stops that uh, reduction reaction. So, um, you know, I like to spread the heat around, but, but keep it primarily on the opposite side of the solder. And then you just, you're touching the solder until you see it start to take. And then you start to, to back the heat off or move it around and the capillary action is going to pull the solder around but i still like to when i can do a bit of a wrap with the solder got that valve on i'm leaving this one off because the actuator is halfway open and that's what you want to do when you're soldering something like this so that plastic piece is off of the seat keeps it from burning up um, just went ahead and like I said, flushed water through, but I'm, I'm not letting it flow because right now this is open. I just don't need that, but got no leaks now. Just need to wire up our new actuator and get that on there. It's unfortunate the things you have to do nowadays is to test stuff. <laughs> get in here and play with all these values here, but it's working. <laughs> 